Welcome to the Sankofa Show. I'm your host, Lolo. Sankofa means taking the learnings of the past to help you propel the way for the future. In our quest in finding solutions to contemporary issues, this is the show in which we're going to take a critical look at all the systems that govern us. That speaks to your legal systems, education system, financial systems, health, cultural systems, spiritual systems, religious systems. Are these systems actually serving us? Or are we merely complying by virtue of having accepted it like that? For such hard talk, help me welcome my next guest. your favorite show Sankofa and I'm your host Lolo. Today I'm not alone in the studio. I've got Madame Quen Quess, Madame Yvonne Boyce, a very passionate uh, young woman that is in our, uh, in our studio today. Gonna share a bit about her life, her story and uh, her journey with the Dandani Youth Group and, and so on. Madame Boyce, please. Uh, introduce yourself. Thank you so much. Um, as it was said, my name is Yvonne Boyce. Um, people are calling me Quen Quest. Um, and it's just right because I'm very passionate about people and in particular with the youth. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, okay, okay. Now, uh, Ozzy Boyce, the Dandani Youth Group, is it only the, it's, it's was an our Damara term as well. <laughs> Is it only for Damaras? Is it? Um, not at all. Not at all. We we are not uh, affiliated to any political party. Okay. Neither are we affiliated to any uh, church denomination. Neither are we only for one group. Um, why the name Dandani is um, because I'm Damara, um, and and that is the wonders of a language, the kwe kwe kova. We were looking for a word in the name of the group that will indicate the fact that we will definitely win one day not in the very far future one day and and uh, you cannot say i will win in a name and then it's a phrase itself so we were looking for a word that will capture that and obviously our language uh definitely give us the word uh, dandani the perfect word that means we will win and that is why it is in the not that we are only catering for one particular group mm. we are catering for all destitute youth mm. youth that needs assistance youth that needs some motivation youth that needs advice um, I'm a teacher by profession and as I said I'm passionate about people in the youth I want to guide I want to direct and together with my chaperones, um, I started the group off with 40 elders, people like myself, because uh, when we are dealing with the youth, we must understand that it is people that are still in their prime time of growth. They are still growing, and hence they don't have it all. Uh, it's for us, the adults, to still guide them and not to do things for them, because I don't believe in um, doing things for okay. other people. I believe in empowering the person to do okay. the thing for himself. When we are here today, um, setting up, uh, allow people to set up, to do this and to do that, in that way they also learn. Um, obviously one of the good days I might not be here anymore and then the loose must know the Rashidas must know what yes. they must do. The Dennis must know what they must do. Absolutely. So it's a learning process for me when I'm dealing with the youth. Yes. Absolutely, mm. absolutely. Now, Madam Boyce, you know, these days, people are so smart. Mm -hmm. 
you get people that uh, uh, use various types of techniques to get things done or to advance their agendas how do we know that you're not just grooming young people for your you are also a politician most so for your maybe for your political ambitions and what but how do we know that you are um, you don't have an agenda yeah. with Definitely not. I, I do not have an agenda. Definitely, and you, you can take it from me, um, the, the intentions are clear. Uh, it came out of my late husband, Mr. Seth Boy's uh, belief and understanding of uh, the power of the youth. Uh, you see, when revolutions take place, it's the youth that is starting. It. Absolutely. And, and uh, we were discussing, because we only have four daughters, unfortunately we don't have a son, okay. but I mean there are so many boy children in my life sure. that I sure. can actually say I have a lot of boys. Sure. But um, we were discussing the upbringing of our girls and uh, my husband was always of the opinion that the, the, the education of the youth shouldn't end with our daughters uh, and because I'm a teacher of profession and he so much believed in me he was always saying you you are destined to do 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 mean something for the youth to do something for the youth and 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 this talk started in 2018 and in 2019 it became more intense um, and then came COVID and unfortunately we lost him to COVID and, and then I decided then that I am going to what he was always saying uh, you have the gift uh, to work with people, to empower people, help the youth you see because what we were saying is it's, it's, it's good if you as an adult stand in a good position and you can school your child and you can give your child the best that you have but but life doesn't work like that you see if you don't look out for the others one of our daughters might end up with somebody who had no opportunities no no nothing and 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 then that is coming to our house in our backyard so so the best is to while you are cultivating yours and um helping them grooming them don't leave the others out because for me when i see a young person i i, I just believe that if it was other circumstances it could have been my child i don't Absolutely. know if That's the it. times and places were maybe different yeah uh, that youngster could have been my child yeah no in so, the past communities sure. used to raise exactly, children exactly exactly I, I, I completely yeah agree. so i believe in that and whenever young people are in my presence i have no hidden agendas they are like my children um when they are a bit older it's fine then we become friends like i'm friends with my daughters so it is it is um no agenda at all <laughs> the, the the fact of the matter is i because I'm an educationalist, yeah. came to the realization, and because I'm a politician, that there is no jobs out there for them. And I, I mean, youth with degrees can't find jobs. Uh, what about the ones who have grade 10? What about the ones yeah. who have grade 12? Yeah. So, so my my idea is, I want to guide them into alternative ways, not to look for jobs only, mm -hmm. because there are so many things that we can do. Like it was said this morning small mining we can go into uh, cooperatives forming of cooperatives i'm always saying to the people look at uh, agra mm. which started uh, it's a small cooperative of yes. six to eight men yes. so my idea is to organize them into groups and that is happening today not next year mm. that they will when they walk out of here they will walk out of here as a member of a cooperative Swap of Moon will have its own cooperative, Valvich Bay will have its own cooperative, Chusakos, wow. and then maybe Okahanja. It wow. depends on where the youth are coming from. Wow. So it's practical things that we are talking about. And wow. I'm saying, uh, I don't want a um, conference where we come and talk, talk, and we go home. Mm -hmm. Already we have a right a license, I must say, because Madame Tero promised that she will help us. Here came our brother, Mr. Mistake, wife, and he offered the space where we can do the mining. So it's just for us now to hint in the application. Yes. And then yes. as a group, yes. Yes. as the Progressive Tandani New York group, we will have a license to pull from our very own resources because Absolutely. obviously the resources is ours. Absolutely. And, and because we are not pulling from it, we are not taking from it, other people are coming and they are taking the space. Yeah. 
uh, I brought forms from the Ministry of um, Lands because the youth that is sitting here today, they need land. I mean, there is no way that we can say I'm a Namibian, but then you don't owe a piece of land. And that is what is happening. We have the forms. I'm saying we apply for communal land. We do it together here. The forms are here. They fill out the forms. We take the forms to the traditional leaders to sign it. We pay, if we have to, those $30 for them. If they cannot pay it themselves, and we hand in the forms, and we don't sit back. We will every second month go and want to find out, did Maria who at her plot? Can we help her now to move? So that is the type of conference wow, wow, that we are having wow. today. Yes. No, Madam Boys, really, I need to commend you on that one. This is what we want. This is, we, we want tangible engagement with young people, pragmatic solutions, bringing the forms, sign here, we're going to go give it in. We are tired of speeches, really. I, I'm sure you... You will agree with me we are tired of speeches we must do this we must do that and you can do this you can bring the solution so that we can be part of the solution so on that note i have i really have to commend you on that i give it to you this is very selfless it's you've you've taken your time to come here you could have do, done other things there you i'm sure you are engaged in a lot of activities even in the traditional space also sure. by the way you are also in the traditional authority yes yes what's um, your what's your role what uh, can you yeah please? i'm a, a tamara uh, and of uh, Tomani because i'm from the Thomas region mm. um i am the spokesperson of the queen of the Common in traditional authority uh, because uh, but I am still now on full-time leave because I have been outside of the country okay. for the past year so I put on some leave mm. I only returned to the country a week and plus some few days back mm. and I didn't I didn't um, get to the office to announce my <laughs> return so okay. When my girls so see me here, I will so much be in trouble because <laughs> I, I was supposed to announce my yes. return report first, report first to uh, the office uh, and say I'm back. But uh, I, I think you will understand okay. uh, because ever since I arrived, uh, yes. Progressive Tandani Youth Group, yes. I was eating it in the morning, afternoon, lunch hour, mm. evening. I, I have been so busy with that, with the preparations of this conference, mm -hmm. so there was no time for anything else in my life ever since I returned back to I the see, country. I see, I see. Now, Madam Boys, mm -hmm. please share with us your story. Your, 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 from your experience of life, you've stayed in a different country, you obviously you've, you've got involvement in traditional matters, you, you've got involvement in business, you were the uh, regional Chief Regional Chief Officer, Regional Officer yes. in the Hardap region. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Share with us uh, your life story. What 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 can these young people take from you? What can they what can they learn from your journey? Yes. Um. Can I say that this is, I'm a, I'm an ordinary um, girl. I'm coming from a very big family. Uh, my mother had twelve children, and I'm number eleven. So I only have one baby sister. Um, we we were brought up as a close knit family, um, and I when I completed my school, I was telling the youth that I was very tiny, so I didn't want to go to Koresep and uh, Pietrus Kaneb and who because I heard so much about the treatment that people are beating other people, so I didn't go out of Vendu for schooling. I went to Ella places, I completed my grade 10 there. And, and that's what I'm saying, if you want something, you can achieve it. Because I didn't go to university then, but I when I finished my grade 10 and then my grade 12 part-time, those years it was success that we were doing part-time studies. Then I decided, but I mean, I've got grade 12 and I've got my teacher's primary teacher certificate, but as a teacher, I needed more and then I decided to enroll myself with the University of South Africa for my very first degree. When I was done with that, by that time I already had now two daughters, so it was, I was then also married, so I had the roles of the wife, the mother and the student, plus the teacher, a full-time teacher, because I was teaching. And, and but I mean, it, it is 
when you want something, I said to myself, I must get a degree because I cannot be a teacher and I'm not having a degree. Yes. And when I got the degree, it's like, wow, why can't I do my master's? And uh, fortunately, before that, my husband went uh, on a scholarship with Telecom Namibia. He was working for Telecom Namibia to England. And he said, why don't you take the girls, and they were free that time, and come with me. And so we went abroad. I think that was a very big challenge. We didn't know the country. We didn't know anything. So we took our three daughters, and we went to England, and we stayed there for two years. Okay. And when I came back, um, I have done my postgraduate diploma in education management because I said to myself, we were studying, why would I just stay at home? While I'm there, I ran around and I applied for scholarships. Said I'm a teacher, I want to do a postgraduate, and I was granted a scholarship. So I got my postgraduate diploma in education management. So when you are talking about management, that's my field. I'm a very passionate uh, administrator. When you give me something, you can count on me that it will be done to, 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 to the levels that uh, it, it is what required. Uh, required, required levels. So when we came back, um, I was working then for the Ministry of Education and there came a program of a master's degrees for people working in the Ministry of Education. They were looking for people who have postgraduate studies and fortunately I already had a postgraduate diploma <coughs> so I've done my master's degree. Uh, was it not for COVID, I would have been a doctor today because I wanted to do my <coughs> PhD. But COVID came and COVID robbed me of my lifetime partner and um, I, I was devastated. Um, uh, it was like my life came to a standstill. Um, it's good to have children. My daughters came up very strongly for me and because one of my daughters were working abroad in Asia. She, they organized amongst themselves, talked and said, let's send mommy out of the country. Maybe that will help her to get over the grief. So that is how I ended up uh, in Asia, in Cambodia. Okay. And they were right indeed, because I, it was like I found myself again there. I made peace with the fact that I lost my lifetime partner. And I understand that life is to go on. And there's my daughters and there's the youth that needs me and that what inspired me to, while I was there, start working on the progress of Tandani Youth Group, to say I must plow back. And I know that it was my husband's passion, young people, helping people, and I said I need to honor him. So I registered a foundation in his name, said Madhava Boys Foundation, and the progress of Tandani Youth Group is one of the wings of that foundation. Because obviously you must have a legal Ended the under which you operate. Wow. So uh, it's to say, said boys, thank you for what you have given me throughout my life. It's not easy when you are a wife that your husband will allow you to study. And uh, but but he fully supported me, and because of him, I am what I am today. Mm. So just to say thank you to him okay. uh, in honor of his name, Progressive Tandani Youth Group. Mm -hmm. I believe that we will make strides in the world and that the youth that engage with me mm. will make positive, positive strides in their life wow. and one day can refer back to Set Madhava Boys and the people that... So if I, I can ask. summarize, yes. uh, you need to work hard <laughs> yes. yes. and when you have reached your heights and your mm -hmm. achievements, mm -hmm. it's time to give back. Exactly. exactly. So that's the take home. That's the take home. Okay. That's We're going to continue on that note with the, the final part of our podcast here right after the break. On that note, we are back on the second and last part of our podcast here. I'm enjoying myself here with Madam Quen Quest. And now, just lastly, uh, now, guys, the way I see, uh, I'm now talking to my guests here i've got a live audience there i've got my guests here by the way if you haven't subscribed yet and you haven't liked this video yet uh, if you've been watching so far it means that you're getting something from this video so please uh do subscribe share like and uh yeah um now just to 
address my audience for half a minute. You see, my ultimate goal with what I'm doing is basically to see a united Namibia. You know, I've observed, I'm an observer, I'm on a lot of watch up groups where I've never mentioned anything, I'm just observing. I'm, 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 I'm on Facebook, but you'll never see anything that I'm saying there, I'm just observing. And from my observation, what I can tell you about our country, Namibia, is that we are very, very divided. We are very, very tribalistic. The Vambus are just thinking about themselves. I'm going to be honest now. The Damaras are just working on their progress and their, their ways and what, what they must do to also be counted and so on. And the Hereros are also running their, in their direction with their stuff and so on. But it is, it is good that we are proud of our tribal groups and groupings and so on, and, and cultures and so on. But somehow we need to get it in our minds that we need to begin to think in a collective sense. And we need to get closer together. Tamaras, Namas, Hereros, Chwanas, all. We need to begin to unify under the Namibian umbrella. Only then are we going to root out corruption. And you see, if you look at all our cultures, the basics of all our cultures are that of the values of sharing, the values of love. In all our cultures, you can go study the Herero culture, the, the, the Damara culture. It's always that how usama, how buddha gegere. The the elder one must look up to the younger ones. The uh, you, there must be trust between the siblings. There must be love between each other. We must be able to look out for each other. The, those are the basic fun, fundamentals of each and every culture. So I want us, our generation, to go back to those roots. To go back to those roots. Only then are we going to realize that this one is first a Namibian. It's my brother first. Before he's a Herero or a different tribe. It's my brother first. Only then are we going to root out nepotism, we are going to root out corruption, because then we are going to have equally shared opportunities, we are going to uh, benefit of our country's resources equally, only then, you see. But while we are still in our, only concentrating in our tribalistic advancement, we are not going to get far. We need to at some point, now my question is, Madam Quen Quest, mm -hmm. do you think this is maybe a pipe dream or am I really just dreaming? Is it so worse, the situation in Namibia, that we will never achieve my dream of us to work as a collective, work as a unit in Namibia, uh, our Namibian identity, Namibian brand coming forth as the people that work together? Because pre-independence, we, we used to live like that. It is only the colonial regime for you guys that are young. Listen to this. It's the colonial regime that came and told us Namas must now stay in Nama Logazi. Herros must stay in Herro Logazi. Bambus must stay there. Before that, we were united. You see. So, my wish is to get Namibia back there. Madam, boys, is this achievable in our lifetime? Is it? I, I, uh, thank you so much. It is achievable. Um, uh, as you rightly said, before um, the other people came, we were living is Namibians along each other. There were no Nama Lokasi and Damara Lokasi. For instance, take the example of Kadutura. When we moved to Kadutura from old location, yes. um, it was already destined like that, that there was a Herero location, there was a Ovambo location, there was a Nama location, and there was a Kamenga location. I don't know which they may be thought that when everybody is placed and they are those ones that are not Left. placed, the leftovers can go. They left there. Uh. So we, we were separated by other people. Uh. But our ancestors were not living like that. And, uh, but I think you generation is better off now. Because when we look at these youngsters here from Wayside High, they don't care whether this person is a Tamara or a Herero. You were seeing them in the acting. It was a unit. Yes. It was a unity amongst us that, that it's not amongst us because we have been divided by other people. But I believe now that it's getting better because 
um, we moved away from those sections that they put us in. Mm. And when we are living in areas that they thought that they will live alone in, mm. like the Hochland Parks and the Agademias and wherever, our children, whether I'm a Damara and the neighbor is a Herero, when they get together, they don't see a Damara and a Herero. They are seeing friends. Mm. So I think it is achievable and Thank we you. will get there. There is light at the end of the tunnel. This generation don't see like we have, because we have been put in those boxes. Mm -hmm. This is Nama location. We were living in Nama location. We grew up together as Namas. We were fortunate that we only had one row of Nama location in the whole of the backwards error location. So our upbringing, we grew up with errors. But the other people were put in those boxes. It's Tamara location, it's blah, blah, blah. That is no more. So it's, it's dissolving. It's, it's dissolving. So we are, we are getting there. Yeah. We are getting there. Yeah. My only worry that I'm having is the apathy of the youth, that the youth now, because, and particularly the youth speaking my mother's language, and, 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 and with reason, because when it is land allocation, we are at the back seat. When it is housing, we are at the back seat. When it is job, employment mm. we are at the back seat with, with so many things mm. we are we are at the back seat but now we are saying enough is enough we 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 the people of this country yes. the aboriginals of this country yes. we now demand these jobs we now demand this land that's why i'm saying we are not going to beg somebody to give us areas in the communal land we're going out there and say we want this for young people to be placed here because they want to be there and it's their land and the land is there it's not like we don't have land the land is there so it's now time that we are going to start demanding what is rightfully ours we start with that small mining license we go to the cooperatives that we are going to mm -hmm. and then we go to the lens and we will have three things that we already achieved out of one conference wow. so watch out and wow. Wow. watch wow. me wow. And, and and watch out we are coming we are okay there. yes okay on that note madam west any last word to our audience there okay now you've been speak uh, speaking to me mm -hmm. so i've got a whole lot of subscribers and viewers out mm -hmm. there that's your camera what do you say to my people out there that are watching you now on youtube all uh, namibians and everybody from the rest of africa that will be um watching. thank you um i i would say please like and share <laughs> wow. yes and and, and subscribe As a because this is the place to be and, you. and 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 <laughs> you will get more of this what you get today from Progressive Tandani Youth Group and many, many other things. And I, I like your the fact that you want to cover traditional and historical and cultural things because that is our basis. If, if the foundation of that is not right, we Absolutely. can't move anywhere. Absolutely. So we need to make sure that our youngsters know about the history, Absolutely. where we are coming from, where we are going to, and how we are going to get there. Keep up the good work. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Madam <laughs> Well, on that note, we've come to the end of this session of our podcast. Thanks a lot for all my viewers. You are very much loved and appreciated. Please do like, share, and uh, see you in the next podcast. Thank you. Okay, Madam Chekla Mutero. Okay, you are now here at the Dandani Youth Group Conference. Can you please tell us your experience about the conference? Anything that you would take home? Yeah, thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity. I find this conference so inspiring and eye-opening encouragement. This is what we want for Namibia that we want to be in the future. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Now, any last word that you would uh, tell my audience there that have missed the conference? What is that that you will take home from this conference that they can take as a learning or that they can? Yeah, this conference, as I say, it was very inspiring.
I could encourage you, Namibians, wherever you are, or anyone who's going to tune on this platform of podcast, join this uh, uh, youth group, which is very upbringing of our young people. And don't forget to, to subscribe and like this uh, inspiring to me. It's my first time to be on a podcast in Namibia. Wow. Thank you. So <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, madam. Okay, Madam Diana Namasis, we are here at uh, the Dandani Youth Group Conference. What's your experience here? Um, thank you for the opportunity. Um, my experience basically by being here is my most important thing is networking. Because okay. once you network with the right people and once you're in the right rooms, mm. that's when you learn something. Absolutely. New. So anytime is a good time to learn. Absolutely. So for me, this is quite a profound moment and Absolutely. I'm super excited to be here. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Networking. Very important thing. For you guys that want to go into business or for anything for that matter, networking is key. Thank you so much, madam. Thank you. All right. Okay. We've got Master, Mr. Mackay William in the hot seat here. Sir, what's your experience in this Dandani Youth Group uh, conference? Uh, firstly, I'd like to uh, give thanks so, to this conference. So it's my first time since I came to Swako to come and attend uh, the conference. Like oh, this okay. So and the, uh, it even opened my mind so to think uh, what I will be. So like what they said, uh, the mind or what you are now. Uh, thinking it will bring money, mm -hmm. or like what they said, uh, you water the tree, the yes. tree will bring the fruit. Thank you. So, so meaning here, even when I will go or whatever, so now my mind is now working mm -hmm. because sitting home, so it won't bring you something. So, like here, I'm now getting something, my mind now is working. Your mind so, is working, yeah, to this conference. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Yes. Thank you. What is your experience from this conference? Are you happy to be here? I, what is your take home? Okay. Firstly, before when we were told we were coming to a conference, yes. I was <laughs> I was not really excited. I was not intrigued at all. Okay. I thought it was just gonna be, you know, old people. No um, offense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but once I got here yeah. and once I sat in that chair and I heard Miss voice speak, it touched me in so many ways because I'm also a child of see I have also I also have a lot of siblings, but then I'm one of the first to be born. So her life story, her life journey has really touched me. Um, her determination and everything she is doing for us, it has, it has a special place in my heart now, and, I'll, um, yeah. Yeah. So, so it's basically appreciation. Yes. Oh. Thank you, man. Sure, sure, sure. Sure, sure. Okay, Unique is going to tell us what her experience is having participated in this conference, and what her take home is from here. Unique. Um, I'm actually shivering, but okay. Okay, um, I would like to thank Mrs. Boy's wisdom and knowledge gain if not shared is not regarded as such. Thanks for, being, thanks for sharing with these few words, wealth is not measured by money, but by the knowledge we share. For mm -hmm. one cannot always give a person a fish, but teach the person how to fish how to for fish. fish. So, by networking, obviously. So, yeah, with those few words, I conclude. Thank you, Madam Unique experience so far from the conference are you enjoying being here yes but first of all i'm thankful to the group to everything that you guys have done for the opportunity for us to be able to sit here and to say hi has gotten this platform and my experience with this was the love that you all have for the namibian child for trying to empower the namibian child and wow. for having hope for each and every namibian child wow with this i say thank you to all wow and all of this wow <laughs> Wow. wow. No, I'm happy that you see the love that we have for the Namibian child 
and uh, it is all for you. It is all for you because we want you guys not to miss the opportunities that we've missed, and we want you guys to experience the best of life, basically. So on that note, I'm giving back to the program director from the corner of the podcast. Over to you. But before that, while we are still hungry, but uh, so what, is right now? Um, what I'm saying to the people all the time is, I, I, I want to empower people. But if I empower you, say for instance, let me take a practical example. When I was working at the Hartab Regional Council as the Chief Regional Officer, I became aware of all the funding that is available in all the regions. And, and then I decided, nobody asked me, I decided I'm going on Radio Damaranama and National Radio and I'm going to talk about this program. It's the Cash for Work program where anybody in living in a place can go to your regional councillor and say to him, I want to start a braai um, business or I want to start a car wash and then it's, he has a budget to buy for you, the equipment to buy, the, the, the equipment to start your business. So I decided I'm going to share that. And then the other officials were so angry with me, like, I mean, you are not supposed to show those things. We are going to um, advertise the things when we are ready, but now you are telling the people and the people are coming to us. And I said, yeah, I'm telling them. Well, they must come to you, well, that's why we are there. So, but the problem was that when somebody goes there, a Martin goes to a regional council office, and he said, okay, uh, I heard over the radio about this cash for work program. We are four people, we want to clean our graveyard, and then the regional council will give you a monthly allowance, and they will buy for you all the equipment to clean. Mm -hmm. But then the People, because um, unfortunately, and that is what uh, Lolo was talking about, the corruption and the nepotism. When somebody gets something like that, 30 projects must be given. He takes five and gives to his brothers and sisters. He takes the other five and gives to the husband's brothers and sisters. Then he takes the other five and then he gives to the friends, children, and, and, and. So the things really doesn't fill the fruit to the really, really needy people. So what I was saying to the people is when you go to the regional councils, the offices, you look for the directorate of planning, they are the ones dealing with that. And you ask them, when you come to a person's office, what our people do, hello, um, I heard that there is such a program, I, I want to get informed in this one, say no. Those things close already and then you turn around and you walk out. Big mistake. And if you don't take anything from me from this conference, take this from me, assertiveness. And that word is so scarcely used. Who heard about the word assertiveness? Assertiveness. But that is the word, I want to write it down, big day. Assertiveness means not for boy can was nice now. Say hello, I'm who 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 I do four skills and introduce yourself. Now when you introduce yourself, you give your power, you tell the person that you are already in a place of power. Man such cuts you will treat your poor skills and then and if the person doesn't do that back to you, say, excuse me, can I know who you are? Because the people go there and say, um, there is no such a program. But if I ask, who did you speak to? There was one lady. How must I go ask who? You introduce yourself when you get to somebody to make a point. You ask the person, if the person is not giving back to you, ask the person, who are you? May I know who you are? Get the name, even note it down, even note it down in your notebook. And then you said, um, sometimes they don't ask you, offer a seat. May I sit because I'm coming from very far. When they give you a chair, you must say, 
Some people said we audio audio because it was a government office. <laughs> yes, yes, it's our place, it's our office. And you said that you said you said some people said we audio audio. Yeah, man. What you go over fat when can do that? Over fat you go. Let's check it. Let's check it. Let's see if it's a good thing. So when the person say that there is no such a program, he won't do it because he knows that you know it's Pete Adams. But I also said, later mm -hmm. like you must answer Pete Adams and so say. So you sit down yeah. and you make Sometimes your point. And if they say no, it's closed and the forms are out. Ask when can I come back again? Man, man, come back to me for longer. Because I want this thing and I'm desperate. I'm destitute. I have nothing. So you you make your strides there and there. That is the word assertiveness. Now we take it. I don't want more. We don't have it in our. Koika. But the bank manager is telling you, you can't withdraw. I'm not going out of this bank.